Okay, uh, hi, welcome to our presentation. Um, I'm going to present our approach to this task, which we titled Recognizing Song, Mood and Theme Using Convolutional Recurrent Neural Networks. So as the name suggests, um, our approach is based on two central ideas, one of which is to employ convolutional recurrent neural networks, uh, usually abbreviated CRNNs as developed by Choi and colleagues. Uh, and we decided to use CRNNs because they have been shown in the past already to perform quite well on audio tagging tasks, which made them seem like a perfect fit to us for this challenge. Uh, and the other central idea to our approach is to actually combine low-level with high-level features in our model. Uh, we did that because actually part of our team members used this idea uh, earlier this year on the task of audio-based hit song prediction and it showed some improvements there, so we wanted to check whether it also works well for emotion and theme detection. So, as I already mentioned, we, use, we combine two different kinds of features. One is the low-level features, for which we just use the raw MELSPEC programs as provided by the organizers. And for the high-level features, we took the essential features that the organizers provided and we hand-selected a set of 22 of those that, for us, sounded like they could help with the task of emotion and theme recognition. So we just, we selected some that sounded useful. And that includes things like uh, shore attacks, uh, danceability score, uh, whether the song is tonal or atonal, uh, beats per minute, and so on. And in addition, we also use two different approaches for constructing our training set. So we have one approach that we call base, that's basically just taking the training set as provided. And for the MELSPEC programs, always extracting them directly from the center of each song. And the second approach, which we call random sampling, uh, for which we actually, per song, take five randomly placed windows for the male spectrums, which does two things. It, of course, gives us a bigger training set, so five times as big, which helps, because our model has quite a few parameters. And it also, we think at least, helps us reduce some bias in the model. Because at least in my experience, the middle of a song tends to be quite different from the beginning and the ending. So if we only always take the center of the song, maybe we add some bias to our model that we don't want. And the uh, random sampling should help us, should help get rid of that as well. Okay, so how does our model itself look? I have a graphical representation here. So we start with the male spectrums. Uh, we feed that into a sequence of four convolutional blocks. Each of those consists of a 2D convolutional layer followed by batch normalization, uh, ELU activation, and finally max pooling. And we also do a dropout of 10% after each of those four blocks. After the convolutional part comes the recurrent part, for which we use two GRU layers. Uh, and then we concatenate the output of that part of the model, with it, that is the CRNN, uh, with our high-level features. So we form a new feature vector that consists of the output of the CRNN plus the high-level features, and we feed that into a very simple two-dense layer classifier. And then we produce the output, which is a vector of probabilities for each label. So that's our base model. We do some slight modifications to that for the different runs that we submitted. So for some runs, we did not include the high-level features and only used the male spectrograms. And for some other runs, we added a very simple attention mechanism after the second recurrent layer. So yeah, we submitted five runs, as many as we were allowed. Uh, run number one and run number two are mainly used for comparing whether the random sampling helps. So that is a very simple model that only uses the male spectrograms. And run number one does not, does not do random sampling and run number two does. Uh, run number three adds the attention mechanism. Run number four adds the high-level features and run number five combines everything and does high-level features plus the attention mechanism. And all of the runs except run number one uses random sampling. So for our results, uh, I have it plotted here. We have we show two metrics, the rock AUC in blue and the F1 score micro-averaged in red. Uh, the top two results are actually the baselines provided by the organizers and the other is our stuff. And the first thing we can note here is that our best two runs perform very closely to the baseline. 
but does not really outperform it. It's a little bit better in terms of PR AUC, but that's really minimal and probably not significant. So performance is very comparable with the baseline. Uh, in terms of ROC AUC, what's very interesting and which we don't really understand yet is we do much worse than the baseline in terms of F1 score. That probably suggests that we do something wrong with uh, determining probability thresholds for doing the label assignments. We do not yet know why exactly that is. Uh, another thing that we can note, so if you compare run 1 and run 2, we can see that clearly the random sampling helps. So that was useful. And another thing we tried, uh, so all of the runs we submitted were trained for 16 epochs, but we also did two runs which we trained for 8 epochs, they were not submitted, uh, to check what impact the high-level features have. So for run 1 that does not use high-level features, we see that the difference in performance between 8 and 16 epochs is quite severe. But for run number 4, that which does use high-level features, we see that the difference in performance between 8 and 16 epochs is much smaller. So for us, that suggests that including the high-level features may not improve performance overall, but it helps the model to learn faster, so it needs less training time. Okay, so I already mentioned basically all the conclusions very briefly for potential future work. Uh, one thing we could do would be fine-tune our model structure to the task because right now the CRNN part of our model is basically exactly what Choi described for the CRNN. Uh, we did not tune that to the task specific. That could be done, that would probably lead to some improvements. Uh, and would what also would very interest me is uh, repeating the experiments on different data sets because the Jamendo data set is kind of special. It's quite focused on indie music, not at all mainstreamy. And I'd be very interested in seeing how well our approach works on a more mainstream data set that has more like music they play on the radio. Okay, thank you for your attention and any questions? <laughs>